talk about that sequence in game four where LeBron and Draymond interacted. Uh, what was your take on what went down there? And, uh, you know, what, what, were you, what were you seeing on the court? Uh, I mean, I got tangled up. Um, I didn't even get to see the whole play. I saw them barking at each other, but there's nothing that's, I mean, guys talk trash in this league all the time. You know, I'm just kind of shocked. Some guys take it so personal. It's like, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a man's league, and <laughs> I've heard a lot of bad things on that court, but at the end of the day, it stays on the court. We're all competitive people. Um, you know, uh, it's, I mean, trash talk is a, it's a part of the game in basketball. I feel like it's part of any sport, especially this competitive. LeBron spoke about that directly after the game. Do you think he overreacted? I don't know. I don't, I'm not, I don't know how the man feels or, um, but um, obviously people have feelings and people's feelings get hurt even if they're called a bad word. Um, I guess his feelings just got hurt. I mean, I, we've all been called plenty of bad words on the basketball court before, you know. You, some guys just react to it differently. Uh, all I can say for myself individually, I just try to ignore it or just let it fuel the fire. But I don't carry it with me when, when the job is done. Joe on the left side. Joe Varden, Cleveland.com. Clay, it's, it's hard, obviously, to know exactly what was going through LeBron's mind. But given the situation and having him knowing what Draymond's situation was, is there, you think there's any possibility that LeBron – knew what he was doing and, and making sure he was mixing it up with, with Draymond? I mean, maybe. Uh, I guess that's, I mean, I don't know. I mean, if you're trying to get any advantage you can get maybe, but uh, I can't speak for the man. I don't know how he thinks or uh, what his motive was. But um, from my point of view, just look like two competitors wanted to win very badly getting tangled up i mean i've seen it thousands of times in this league obviously with the stakes that are at the you know we're playing for everything's going to be a little more in the spotlight but um i don't know what i don't think he was steve in the back uh steve ashman or nba.com uh, clay um given how hot draymond sort of runs how, how he plays you're aware of any of you guys having any talks with him to sort of remind him of, of where he stood in this point system? And the second part is, is it a little bit like starting a game with four or five fouls in his case because he knows yeah. that the first one's going to be a problem? Yeah. Um, I mean, we mentioned it, but uh, I don't think he did anything purposely to put himself in that position. Um, from what I saw out there, it just looked – incidental but uh whatever he did in game four was not on purpose so he was not trying to Draymond's a very intelligent player he was by no means trying to get thrown out so um we're gonna make up for it though and it is what it is at this point and we're just gonna go out there and next man up approach Mark back right Mark Spears ESPN's the undefeated play um let's talk about growing up playground What's the rules of trash talking, and, and do you consider it once you walk off the floor, it's, it's done and over with? Yeah, I mean, there's some unwritten rules. You know, you don't really talk about anybody's family, or um, that's probably the biggest rule. You don't talk, bring any outside factors into it. But if it's just, you know, talking man to man, you know, uh, at least when I, you know, me and my friends playing growing up, AU circuit, whatever, if it was something you said to the, another individual and it was going out their character or whatever, but it was just about them. You can live with that. You know, um, I mean, I grew up with brothers too. So when we would play, I mean, we would always try to put each other down. And I grew up with a lot of friends close in age. We were competitive. But uh, you just, like I said before, trying to don't bring anybody's family. That's the only time I really cross the line, bring someone's family into it or talk about race or gender or something, but when it's just a bad bad words or something or some cuss words, man, it's, it's emotions. You let it go and you let it stay on the court. Would it be safe to say that 
in the NBA, trash talking is commonplace. Yeah, I feel like in every pro sport, it's commonplace. Whether it's the NBA, MLB, NFL, um, guys are competitive, man. They're trying to win, and a lot of these guys grew up trash talking. Some of the best players in this, the history of the game were trash talkers, so it's, um, it's very common in the NBA. Rusty in the front. Play. Coach, Coach Kerr mentioned that uh, you guys didn't find out until late in practice that Draymond was going to be suspended. How, how tough does that make it to, to prep for game five when you don't know exactly what kind of lineup you're going to have? Definitely doesn't make it easier, but um, we'll still have shoot around tomorrow. We'll, we'll all mentally prepare tonight what we got to do to make up for Draymond's absence. But uh, we'll just learn on the fly. I mean, I'm proud of this team because we been so great all year making adjustments and this is just a, a, obviously a big adjustment we got to make but um, it's another challenge for us and we're going to embrace it and we're going to accomplish it. Any other questions? Thanks Clay. Yep.